Travel by road on the west coast of Norway using the E39 highway can be slow, interrupted by fjord crossings using ferries. The Norwegian Roads Authority, Veivesne, has a programme of replacing ferries with undersea tunnels. Rogfast is the name given to one of these crossings, the deep Boknafjord, north of Stavanger. A 27 km crossing will be made using two road tunnels side by side. From the Stavanger end, a shorter section will come to land on the island of Kvitse before diving down to the longest section, which at its deepest will be 390 metres below sea level. Test bores to establish the nature of the rock were made from land, but this left uncertainty about the deepest part under Boknafjord known to have complex geology. It was time for new thinking and it was decided to use drilling techniques from a ship adapted from the offshore oil industry to drill holes intersecting the planned line of the tunnels at selected locations. Rock samples and continuous cores would be taken up to establish the nature and pressure tightness of the rock formations. Island Offshore's subsea construction vessel Island Performer was chosen for the job as it is equipped with a module tower, moon pools, an offshore crane and two ROVs to carry out the work. Importantly, it has heave compensation on the equipment, allowing loads to be landed smoothly on the seabed even if the ship itself is responding to rough sea conditions. Island Performer also has DP3 dynamic positioning, allowing it to stay over a given point on the seabed without anchoring, despite the efforts of wind, waves and current to drive it off location. On site, the first task is to deploy the ROV, equipped with a suction tool, to clear away soft sediment down to bedrock at the bottom of the fjord, 200 to 280 metres below sea level. A 60 ton subsea guide base with centre tube and subsea lubricator is lowered over the ship's side to the cleared seabed using the crane. It then has to be levelled to give a true vertical reference for the first few metres of drilling done by adjusting the four movable feet. I'm Arne Dalsen, I'm a drilling superintendent in Island Offshore. And uh, we, we are about to running the, the coal tubing services for, for, uh, for, for Staten Sveivesen on the Rugfast project. And the unique thing is that the, the, the uh, coal tubing has been known technology for a long time. But this is the first time we'll be running a subsea injector. And the unique thing is that the, uh, the, this uh, subsea injector is powered up by the uh, RV, hydraulic powered, and so is the, the uh, instrumental. It's going through the uh, RV as well into a uh, big, huge container where the, the operator run them two injectors simultaneously. And also in the future that we will see this will go in, in the live wells offshore in a very short time. So we see that the market is, is great ahead of us and uh, that will be the next step in, in, uh, from a vessel like this. On the seabed, the ROV locks it in place. The drilling system is then prepared, positioned by the ROV and connections made to supply power for tube feed from the ROV's hydraulic power unit.
As drilling progresses, samples of drill chips are collected for analysis by Vevesne. Uh, my name is Michael L. I work for Baker Hughes as a coil tubing operator. Uh, this is the coil tubing cabin where we uh, operate the injector heads at surface and uh, this station here operates the subsea injector uh, which is electronically controlled and uh, we can set our pressures, speeds for running in hole, out of hole. We've also got cameras on the subsea injector where we can see our pressures and parameters. Uh, we're basically operating the subsea injector from here. We've just got the joystick and the mouse so we can click on anything and set different pressures. Uh, we're basically running a C cup tool at the minute. So we're currently running in the well we've already drilled and uh, for pressure testing the formation. Coil tubing drilling enables the borehole to be steered away from the vertical after a few metres start so that the hole can approach the tunnel level at the optimum angle to win the most geological information. The passive heave compensation allows operations to proceed smoothly in spite of the action of waves on the ship. As drilling reaches the position of maximum interest, a coring bit and core barrel is substituted for the standard bit. When the bit and core barrel has been recovered, the inner tube is cut open to extract the continuous rock cores for study. With the desired information secured, the borehole can be plugged and seabed equipment hauled up. The final operation is recovery of the ROV via the centre moon pool and island performer can then move to the next drilling location. <laughs>